has no offense, but wants to work one-on-one -on -one all the time. The Washington Quest has pretty well conceded that Texas Western cannot stand up to Kentucky. The date was March 19, 1966. Cole Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Maryland was getting ready to host college basketball's national championship game. One of the teams playing that night was his well-known basketball powerhouse, the University of Kentucky, led by their legendary coach Adolf Rupp. Kentucky had won the national championship four times before, and they were expecting to win their fifth title that night. Very few people knew anything about Kentucky's opponent that night, Texas Western, or their coach Don Haskins. It was almost 10 o'clock at night when the starting lineups were introduced. One by one, they ran onto the court. It was then that the fans watching from the crowd and at home on television suddenly understood the significance of the game. Five white players would face off against five black players to decide the national championship. In an era where racial integration was resisted throughout the South, and much of the country still considered black athletes inferior, the outcome of the 1966 basketball game would have a meaning far beyond the world of sports. In the years leading up to the historic 1966 game, racism and discrimination against black Americans was a fact of life, especially in the South. Until the mid-1960s, blacks were not allowed to use the same public facilities like bathrooms and drinking fountains as white people. President John F. Kennedy, a strong supporter of civil rights, was assassinated in 1963. It seemed at the time that any chance of passing a Civil Rights Act died with President Kennedy. But President Lyndon B. Johnson, a Southerner himself, surprised many people by pushing hard to complete the Civil Rights Act started by Kennedy, and it was finally passed by Congress and signed into law in 1964. The laws greatly improved the legal rights of African Americans, but laws alone cannot change how people feel. The reaction of many people to the new laws was to fight even harder against the equality of whites and blacks in everyday life. Starting all black players against all white players in the 1966 national championship game was revolutionary to many people, but it wasn't the beginning of integration in sports. World War II had a powerful impact on how many people felt about race. There was a strong emphasis on our country's democratic values during the war, and the shocking images of concentration camps being liberated had a powerful effect on many attitudes about race. White universities began playing teams from black schools, sometimes in secret, sneaking into gyms during the dark of night to avoid protests and death threats. Over time, as traditionally white universities began to integrate, their coaches started to recruit some black athletes. But when integrated teams from the North played games in the South, they were oftentimes asked to leave their black players at home. Even if they were allowed to play in the game, they were forced to stay at different hotels or even be left on the bus while the white players ate in Southern restaurants. While many in border states realized that it was time to allow their all-white teams to compete against all-black and integrated teams, there was strong backlash from schools in the Deep South. The governor of Georgia, for example, said, The South stands at Armageddon. We cannot make the slightest concession to the enemy. There is no more difference in compromising the integrity of race on the playing field than in doing so in the classroom. The University of Kentucky was part of the Southeastern Conference, or SEC, and they played many teams in the Deep South, including Mississippi and Alabama. But many of Kentucky's students and administrators supported integration. In fact, in the early 1960s, university officials put pressure on Coach Adolph Rupp to recruit black players. Rupp mostly ignored these requests, telling the university's president that despite his best efforts, he simply could not find black players that were smart and disciplined enough to play Kentucky basketball. The Texas Western Miners were coached by Don Haskins, a former girls and boys high school basketball coach hired by the university in 1961. Unlike Rupp in Kentucky, Don Haskins and his team were unfamiliar to most of the country. These were the days before college basketball games were regularly televised. Even most sports fans had never seen Texas Western play. 
Don Haskins was a tough, practical coach. In his four years with the Miners, he had aggressively recruited both black and white athletes. The team he took to the national championship game in 1966 consisted of seven black, four white, and one Hispanic player. In the final game, Haskins only played his seven African Americans. He said he was not trying to make a statement about civil rights. He just used the players that he felt gave him the best chance to win. The Wildcats of Kentucky came into the game ranked number one in the country, and very few fans or sports writers took Texas Western seriously. The crowd of 14,253 at Cole Fieldhouse that night was almost entirely white. Confederate flags could be seen throughout the arena, while the Kentucky band played the Southern anthem Dixie. Claude E. Harrison of the Philadelphia Tribune wrote, no, this wasn't a minor civil war, but it was Negro against white, and in this age and time, such a pairing makes one take sides. The game itself was a slow-paced, defense-oriented matchup with very little drama. Ten minutes into the game, Neville Shedd from Texas Western sank a foul shot that gave the Miners a lead they never lost. Still trailing 72-65, and the ball game is over. As Kentucky has lost the championship game for the first time in their history. For the first and only time in history, an all-black team had played and defeated an all-white team in a national championship game. The integration of college basketball was a gradual process that took place over many years, but most people see the 1966 Kentucky vs. Texas Western Championship game as a watershed moment, a major turning point that led directly to many of the reforms that came soon after. The very next season, there will be black freshman basketball players in every Southern Conference, including the SEC where Kentucky played. Pat Riley, probably the most famous player from the Kentucky team that lost to Texas Western, still calls that game the Emancipation Proclamation of 1966. Immediately after the game, Coach Don Haskins said, I started my five best players. The fact that it was the first time five black players had started in an NCAA championship game meant nothing to me. But in his book, Glory Road, Haskins was more reflective about the game's impact. No matter where I travel, people come up to me and thank me for starting five black players. I'd be somewhere decades later, and all of a sudden a black man would come up to me and want to shake my hand and thank me because after the 1966 game, schools throughout the country began integrating and he got a scholarship somewhere because of it. This kind of stuff would blow my mind. Adolph Rupp remained the coach of Kentucky until 1972, after several unsuccessful attempts to recruit a black player to Kentucky, he finally succeeded in 1969 with Tom Payne, a 7'2 All-American from nearby Louisville. Don Haskins coached the Miners for another 33 years. The story of his historical 1966 championship season was celebrated in the film Glory Road. Alongside the other major events of the civil rights movement of the 1960s, the result of a basketball game between two colleges seems insignificant on the surface. But if nothing else, the 1966 game between Texas Western and Kentucky proves that sometimes revolution, reaction, and reform can have a practical side. Those involved with sports in the 1960s and beyond would have a choice to make continue the practices of segregation and discrimination, limiting their team's chances to win, or to open the doors wide and allow athletes of all races and backgrounds to participate equally. Then let the chips fall where they may. Coach Don Haskins believed that winning trumps racism every time. It took some time, but eventually the rest of the sports world would catch up to him. Oh, the door.